let's look at the the final and I guess the most devastating potential impact of this this necrosis of the jaw. If we could see the next image, and again for the uninitiated, could you explain what this is about? Yeah, this is a condition called osteoradial necrosis, and while there's no good universally accepted definition of it, it's generally considered to be um, a, a site of bone damage uh, following a radiation history in the bone. Generally, bone that doesn't heal or breaks down um, for an extended period of time after radiation uh, history. Now, the most common cause is trauma to the jawbone. It is possible for this condition to develop spontaneously, but generally spontaneous osteoradial necrosis is very easily managed with just conservative cleaning out of the bone and mouthwashes and antibiotics. But the most common cause is trauma. And the biggest source of trauma to the jaw is tooth extraction. So if we can eliminate teeth that we feel are not are in a bad state to begin with and are likely to continue to break down throughout the patient's lifetime. And remember, if the goal of treatment is cure and the patient's going to be with us for the next 10, 20, 30 years, we've got to try and look into the future and assess how well can this tooth be maintained. And if the answer is we don't think it can maintain, be maintained very well at all, it should be removed before the radiation commences. Uh, if we can do that, get the bone healed up, then the potential for osteoradial necrosis is much reduced in these patients. If we ignore that and just carry on as normal, let the tooth break down, 20 years' time, patient's forgotten about all their radiation history, present to a local dentist with a toothache, dentist comes along, pulls a tooth, and lo and behold, things don't heal, and you can have this very devastating pathologic fracture, as you can see, in that one image and a, a draining fistula to the bottom of the, to the skin under the jaw in the other image. Uh, that's a really nasty complication that's very, very difficult to get on top of. So it just highlights the importance of pre-treatment dental assessments and dealing with any unresolved urgent medical issues in the area of radiation as soon as possible to try and get the patient as dentally fit as possible for their treatment. And it, and it's, a, it's a difficult sell sometimes to explain to patients that, you know, we feel you should lose these teeth, um, but we do it because we know that the, comp the complications are much, much worse than losing a few teeth along the way. Just before we move to our, our final image uh, 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 to show how uh, shocking necrosis uh, can be, uh, I want to let people know that if you want to know more about the dental assessment process prior to treatment, uh, Dr Andrews has discussed that with me. And if you go back to our YouTube channel, you'll see that there is a, a, a video where he describes that process uh, in more detail and why it can sometimes be necessary to just to extract five, six or even more teeth prior to treatment as a way of ensuring this never happens. But let's look at our final image. And again, you can describe this just so we face how tough it can be. Yeah, so again, this is um, what's called a grade two classification of osteoretic necrosis, where you can see the bone there um, broken through the gum area in the back part of the, the bottom jaw. Uh, you know, you're not going to get that healing of that wound until you can eliminate all of that dead bone. And that often requires a big surgical resection to do so. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's something that we really ought to try to prevent as much as, as much as we can. Look, Nick, I'd just like to say thank you so much for running through those images. And uh, I urge people to Google Head and Neck Cancer Australia for a comprehensive evidence-based website with information. And also this YouTube channel has other interviews uh, with Dr. Andrews uh, giving expert dental observations and other speakers as well. Don't be afraid. There's a great deal people can do to help you, but we're trying to lift awareness and to get more help for the head and neck cancer patient. But thank you so much uh, for joining us now. Thank you so much. Julie.